Trading is not about winning every single trade. We are at the end of the day in a market of probabilities and even the best traders will take losses. And in this video, I'm going to be talking you through the losing trade that I've recently took, how it came about and how I have you know, really trained my brain to accept this, continue and look for the next trade and the next profit opportunity. OK, so what? how do I get myself to the level of trader that I am at right now? As you know, I've traded multi millions, I've made the profits and, you know, I'm, I'm here to then give back and teach you via the methods that I myself use every single day. So when looking for a trade, I'm always interested in a few key factors. OK, I recognize it's a game of probabilities. So there's never a 100 percent um, trade. There's never even the ones where I feel ultra confident all the confluence in the world. I really feel I'm going to win it. I always know there's that slight possibility of losing nevertheless. So I'm very focused on risk management. OK, you're never going to see me going high leverage, risking it all on a trade. No, it's not going to happen. Good risk management, easy to spot and understand invalidation. So where I'm placing my stop loss, I love a trade where I know straight away that's my invalidation. That's my stop loss. And then finally, waiting always for only the best high probability trades. So I'm picking up where I left off my last video, where at the time, of course, I was in a, a short patience. trade. <laughs> I was looking for a bit of patience off of a short trade, right, that we had rejected from the uh, Fibonacci from high to low. We had, of course, come into the CC Fibonacci level, and I was at that time remaining patient. As you know, though, we had two levels above and below NPOC there, 27,112, and the NPOC above us, 28,287. At the time, remaining patient and a short, waiting to see what came to me next. And what actually came to me next, of course, at that time, that was actually the second CCB target in a row, if you remember. We had the uh, Fibonacci rejection. And then we came down and we all know we, we hit that target after hitting that target, we got a bit of a bounce and that bounce actually though presented us a second day in a row CCV setup, which was then a long trade. So <laughs> the, the setup gave us the high to bring it down to that low. And then from that low, it gave us a reversal long. And what I actually done was I waited for the activation acceptance of the CCV once more. And so I called my team that I have now taken along on a pullback. At the time we had come up, hit the PDEQ and we were starting to pull back here. And on that pullback, I decided to take the long trade and I've alerted my team, right, I've took a long trade now on Bitcoin. This was a losing trade. So how did I lose this trade? And, you know, how did I cope with that loss? <laughs> um, very simple, actually. So what happened was I took the long trade on the pullback that we were getting. I knew where my target was, which was above twenty eight thousand dollars. I knew where my invalidation was. I knew the reason for entry. But then this is where things started going bad as I've taken a long trade, but the market's pulling back still. I will make it you aware I, I still am in the short trade from the CC Fibonacci. This always for me is a good psychological tip. So if you struggle sometimes even taking a trade, you know, if you're thinking, oh, I'm going to take a long here on the pullback, but you know, I'm, I'm a bit worried, anxious, and you, you end up missing a trade through your lack of confidence, really. I always find a big confidence booster if I'm taking a long trade is when I have a short trade from higher. That's why it's very rare that I'll close all of a short trade. I love to hold them for a little bit of a confidence uh, booster in myself or just that psychological feeling of, hey, if I lose this long trade, well, at least I'm still making profits on the short. So I had that trade still open, then no reason to close it. But I did take a long at the same time. But then this is where it started going bad. We actually then started to see as we were getting close to New York open, uh, a large pullback on the stock market. So the ES pulling back heavily and the ES pulling back was also at the same time as we were actually seeing the DXY, Forex dollar, uh, rise in price. So this, of course, is, is also negative because the Bitcoin follows the stock market. So the stock market's moving down. The DXY is moving up and then Bitcoin is inversely correlated to the DXY. So we're seeing everything in our, you know, correlated markets which would imagine having a negative effect on Bitcoin. And, you know, it took a little bit of time, but it, it did, um, you know, did have a negative effect because the ES continued to drop. So, you know, as this was starting to pull back here, I'm recognizing, you know, if it starts to lose this low once more, this is, this is very likely to affect Bitcoin negatively. ES did continue to drop. The ES did 
sorry, the ES did continue to drop, the DXY uh, did continue to rise, which of course very likely means Bitcoin drop. And then we did see if, you know, a little bit of time later, Bitcoin starting to get its drop too. So, you know, that for me was enough reason to, you know, get out of the Bitcoin long and, you know, wait for another setup. And where was my next level that I have on the chart? Was of course that NPOC below us. And so this is where we had actually had the activation of the long trade setup. OK, and this was simply off of a SFP onto that naked point of control. So I want to just explain this to you all fully because I think you can learn a lot here. And that is, of course, I had just took a Bitcoin long on the pullback. OK, I got stopped out of that long for a loss. But then I'm presented with another new long opportunity based off a different set of criteria, okay, and a new reason to enter that long. I've now seen a swing failure pattern onto the NPOC. So though I have just taken a losing trade, I am not then fearful to take another long trade. Okay, a lot of people get into that situation. They are, they lose a trade. You know, you could see another long setup even one minute later, and they're fearful to take that long because they've just lost a trade. For me, that's never the case. So Bitcoin, yes, it got a big drop and the majority of the world at that time right now are fearful. They are thinking, oh God, that's a big drop on the stock market. That's a big drop on Bitcoin. That's a big rise on the DXY and they're hesitant. But for me, you know, I saw that and I've seen now, OK, I've got a new valid trade entry. I've got an entry trigger after the SFP onto the NPC. I've got a stop loss invalidation and my target remains above twenty eight thousand dollars, which I do tell my team. OK, uh, as we scroll down, we start to see good reactions on the DXY. OK, as that starts to pull back, which, of course, is positive for Bitcoin and, you know, reminding my team as we get a bit of a bounce under the way, you know, the target remains $28,000, which was from the original CCB setup, if you remember. <laughs> um, so, you know, that for me was very positive and a reason to remain in that long trade. Of course, if you actually take very good notice here, uh, you can see from this post, I gave the you can see there's the lower MPOC and look at that higher MPOC. So exactly what I had already listed out for you on the YouTube video, right? NPOC, NPOC. Well, when you zoom in here on the chart, you can see that lower MPOC was a swing failure pattern of these lows onto the NPOC. And that rise that we actually rose up to was just above the higher MPOC CCV target. So that just goes to show how we can lose an original long trade, but we're given another setup opportunity which gives a, another long trade and that target was above 28k which is a ccv target on top of the npoc that we have above us and then we actually go from the low of the move to the high of the move okay so in this video i just wanted to show you first of all how you can have two levels marked on the chart and that <laughs> then goes on to give you the exact low and exact high, which is, you know, that's just trading. This is technical analysis. I've, all, I've told you, right, trading is a game of a probabilities. There are no 100% uh, guarantees, but you can see when you have good levels marked out, when you understand technical analysis, that's time the exact low of the market. And that is still, even if two days later, time the exact high of the market currently. And the day before that, we timed the exact time of the CCV. So we're able to understand and, you know, recognize ahead of time, potential lows, potential highs. Then it's understanding potential levels, but then having the confidence to trade them. So I see the swing fur pattern onto that NPC. I have the confidence to go into my group and tell everyone happy to take this long trade. You know, if I'm telling people that you can imagine a lot of people what they might be doing as well. I actually saw that SFP and I did wait about, you know, it was about 10 minutes because I wanted to see the reactionary volume after the SFP. So I didn't take it instantly, but I, after the seeing this, I waited about 10 minutes to confirm. I really like the order flow. And that's when I got into the long trade with the target, you know, still above $28,000. So I had about over, a, you know, about 1% stop loss. And in the end, you know, I've made over 3% gains. So that, you know, gives me, if I'm in 100 dollar position let's just say you know i'm risking uh one to gain three you know three to one risk to reward ratio with an entry you're risking 
1% to gain a potential 3% and of course price rises 3%. So what I really wanted to emphasize in this video was not that we can <laughs> recognize highs and lows. It's, it's trading is a game of probabilities. Please stop thinking you're always going to win or I'm even, even thinking that I'm always winning. No, I am going to be taking losses. You know, I am taking losses. Losses are a part of trading. If we succumb to our losses and that pain, then yeah, trading become, become a very painful spiral and you can get very big drawdowns but when you reach I don't want to say success I just want to say when you reach this level of understanding of the markets when you reach this level of confidence in your analysis when you start to just truly have that connection with the charts and love for the charts and true true passion for what you're doing I just find it so easy to come in here do my technical analysis tell my team what I'm doing, the reasons why I'm doing it, and understand, well, this can be a winning trade, this can be a losing trade. I'm very good at keeping my losses small, and yes, great profits on the rise when we get the winners, so the winners are much bigger than the losses. I'm not winning 100% of the time, I'm getting some losses, I'm getting some winners, but what I do know is that we are making very good profits, not just myself, but champions alongside me able to, you know, trade altcoins, trade Bitcoin, trade uh es you know all that you know it's basically just something that makes me as a mentor very happy to see um so yeah if you want to see more from myself and the rest of the chart champions coaches of course we do live streams every single day we have a whole content library of um educational content the biggest you're going to see online for cryptocurrency although this you know, of course, works also for the stock market, also for Forex. So you can understand and learn from this theory and trade every market in the world. I have got another live stream today for the champions. This is a higher term time frame swing trading session going over on Bitcoin. We do have live trading, dedicated altcoin streams, everything that you need, basically, uh, we've got for you over at Chart Champions. So if you would like to get involved on that, you know where to do it, chartchampions.com. It's also where if you want to go over on the deals page, we have all of our latest exchange deals, which are the best possible ones you can get right now. So yeah, if you want to see more of myself and the team, if you want to become a profitable trader you know where you can do it chartchampions.com i'm going to say thank you ever so much hope you've enjoyed this quick video and i will catch you next week for some technical analysis where i'll go over exactly what i'm looking for next and you know if you want that information now and you don't want to wait well i've got a live stream starting in a few hours for the champions for my higher term time frame trades bias and outlooks cheers everybody thank you ever so much and that is me signing out of this one thank you and goodbye